Welcome to Anatomy 101 and 102 Laboratory Safety video. And this is, just so you know, safety starts with you and you wearing your mask. So let's go ahead and go over how to select a face mask. Face masks that are acceptable will be cloth, surgical, or an N95. What is not acceptable will be a bandana, a neck gaiter, any kind of valve mask. This includes half mask respirators. And you'll notice they have a little like port either on the side here or at the front. And then a face shield by itself. You can add a face shield to any of these but you cannot have a face shield on its own. Now how to wear a face mask. You want to make sure that your face mask covers your nose, your mouth, and is secured to the bottom of your chin, and then it fits snug snugly on the side, which means you can't stick your fingers in through the sides. You also want to make sure that your nose is covered as well as your mouth. Now for the lab safety items of the day, we are going to discover where the lab safety items are both in Canvas as well as in the lab. We're going to be prepared in case of accidents or spills. We're going to go over the cadaver procedure and how to be prepared before dissection as well as during dissection, and then learn how to be safe in the laboratory space in terms of first aid, and then um, there's additional AMP information and action items required of us. So when it comes to laboratory safety, your safety is very important to us. You do want to make sure that you just come right at the start of lab to make sure that you're either on time or early so you can hear what additional tips and tricks we may have for you to be prepared for the lab that day. Now we do have all of our lab safety information digitally, so right here in the Canvas shell, you'll notice that we have the pre-lab quiz. This is what you were supposed to have done before you come to lab today. I know some people will be adding, so it will be available. There's a paper manual inside it. Um, you don't actually need the paper manual, just so you know, but it, it is there in case you did want something a little extra. Now, in terms of lab safety, this is our lab safety library. Inside, you'll find the pre practice. This is the industry standard of how to be safe in a lab. This is the OSHA guidance, safety guidance. This is what um, employees need to do to be safe in a lab. And this is just the general information about the man mask mandate that is required for any building inside any of the MSJC campuses. Next, how to select a face mask. So again, we just covered this, but this is here in case you want additional reference. See, there's just the rules again. Here's the lab safety PowerPoint and video in case you're dying to watch it again. This is our FAQ, which is where we get asked a lot of questions. That, um, this is where we have the answers to a lot of questions we get asked, including eating, drinking. Obviously, there's none of that in here. And this is where this industry standard page is listed from. The clothing requirements, we'll go more in detail about that. Um, if you're pregnant, we have specific um, recommendations that we would make for you. And this, again, depends on the health of, of the expecting mother. And these are more detailed rules. It's quite a bit here, but again, this is how to operate within a lab. And these are our dissection requirements. You'll have these both physically in print, both in Canvas, and then um, we show them on the in the actual cadaver room when we go in there. Next, we're going to go over our lab tips and tricks. And um, so this is our lab tips and etiquette that our Professor Houseman put together for you. It's how to log into Canvas, but one of the best things on here is bringing um, headphones. And you want to make sure that it's not those cool AirPod headphones. It needs to have this little jack right here that can go inside the USB attachment on the side of the computer. Now moving on, we're going to go into learning how to be safe in the lab. First, you want to know for your structure if you have any medical condition. This includes pregnancy, allergies, any kind of autoimmune disorders. Um, depending on what the issue may be, you may require uh, special precautions for you to take just to ensure your safety while inside the cadaver room or during any of our dissections at the student bench. Now these are the top five things that we're going to be covering today. A clean desk space, um, proper attire, the eating and drinking rules, handling sharps, and knowing how to be prepared where, by knowing where safety equipment actually is inside the lab. And so clean desk space, like we said, the first thing you start off, you always want to make sure you wipe your desk down before and after you leave. You don't know who have been there, may have been there before you. And at, at any of our campuses, we'll have a variety of wipes. But at MBC, we have the green work, and we have the sanitizing wipes um, at Temecula Valley campus. Now closed-toed shoes are the only type of shoe that is required or that's allowed in lab. Um, any kind of open-toed sandal like that is not allowed. You need a shoe that covers the top, the sides, and the back of your feet. And there's no food or drink in any of MSJC's labs. Now the kind of containers that are allowed is anything that can be sealed shut. So it's sealed shut and put in your bag. That way in case it gets knocked over it doesn't spill inside of your backpack and onto the laboratory floor. Any of these fun drinks are not allowed inside lab. No fo open food containers are allowed inside lab. Those need to be left out on, on the Medicare Valley campus, on the bench on the outside of the lab, 
But in TV, TVC, you need to make sure that you've eaten and drinking all of your food before you go into the laboratory room. Broken glass and sharps. We'll be working with glass that can break. If you do break glass, please let your instructor and I know. That way we can make sure we sweep it up and properly dispose of it in the broken glass container. And if you are working on a scalpel blade, this is a, a blade remover. We'll teach you how to use it when we actually go to, to dissection. So being prepared in case of accidents. Um, if you've cut yourself, poked yourself, spilled, or anything like that, please let us know so we can um, get it cleaned up and then get you protected with a band-aid. And if you do get any chemicals in your eyes, please let us know again. Um, we'll take you to the eye wash station where we can wash your eye out for either 5 to 15 minutes, depending on the severity of the chemical. And so once we walk into the lab, you'll see here, this is the fire extinguisher, and this is our eye wash station. To properly use it, you push your hand toward the wall on this little paddle right here, and that will flush it. Next, we go on, this is the other door. You'll have a fire extinguisher, you'll have your first aid kit, and you'll have your broken glass container. Now this is the 102 room, the other was the 101 room, and we have a very similar setup. A fire extinguisher, an eye wash, and a shower in case um, you spill and to wash your whole body, and then a first um, aid kit. Our newest canvas TVC in room 515, they have their fire extinguisher right outside their cadaver room entrance door from the lab, right next to their goggle cabinet. You have your first aid kit, this is right by the IA prep lab. And then you're going to have the um, shower and eye wash station, again, seeing front paddle motion by the front of the classroom. Now, cadaver care. So we do work with cadavers and preserved animal specimens, which require additional safety precautions in a normal biology class. We require PPE, which is proper personal protective equipment, to reduce your exposure. And so you can absorb these chemicals, breathe them in, absorb through the skin. So we want to cover as much as we can. This means we need to have goggles gloves, a lab coat, and long pants. Now, if you do bring gloves with you, they need to be nitrile or vinyl only. Um, the chemicals just absorb straight through the latex. But here's an interesting fact. Did you know that HIV can survive in preserved cadavers for up to three weeks? A lot of people don't know that. So that's why we ensure we want you to have proper PPE. So the cadaver viewing requirements. So again, the closed-toed shoe, the goggles, the proper PPE, including gloves, a long pant, and um, a lab coat. Now, um, sh there's no short skirts or short dresses allowed in lab. A lab coat covering these items does not mean that you are in compliance with your PPE requirements. Again, you need to have the shoe, you need to have the pants. And students are not allowed um, in the cadaver room or dissection room. You can't even be viewing it, so if your partner's cutting and you're just watching, you need to be in proper PPE as well. And if you are asked to go get that stuff and anything you miss during that time, um, you will not be allowed to make up. So please come to lab with proper PPE on, including the first day. Now, cadaver rules, we're required um, to show these to you from our cadaver providers. So there's no photography of the cadavers at all. So please don't even bring your cell phone into the room. We don't want to risk dropping anyone. And the confidentiality is required. So HIPAA, that does imply it is um, provided for those who have passed on, aka our cadavers. Uh, so please make sure that you aren't talking about them outside the laboratory uh, setting and do not take anything from the cadaver. These rules will be both in Canvas as well as in the lab. And so the action items for the day. We're gonna to need to make sure that we do, there's three physical things you're gonna turn in to me. You're gonna turn in the safety quiz, you're gonna turn in the volunteer uh, form sign, and you're gonna turn in the sign mask policy. I need all three of these for you to do lab today. And again, this is that pre-lab quiz that will be done digitally. All right, guys, let's have a safe summer. I'll see you in lab.